What should you expect maintaining in your yard if you relocate to Concord, North Carolina? Let me give you some insider tips. The first thing you should know is that your realtor is going to ask you to get a survey so you know exactly where your property lines are. That's really important if you happen to have territorial disputes with your neighbors over where you put a fence. You want to make sure that you are abiding with the regulations of the municipality and the county so they don't come over after they discover it with a drone and have you pull it up. The thing you should also know about territorial disputes, it's not just with neighbors. Currently, I'm in a fight for my yard with these guys. You see this giant red mound right there? Yep. That giant red mound is fire ants. They're not native to this area. When you move here, we're gonna make you feel right at home. But those guys, we wish they had never gotten trucked up in here. They're a Brazilian breed. They are an invader and they're terrible because they actually kill our native good ants. And I know that sounds weird to think about good ants, but you have this entire ecosystem that belongs where it belongs. These things are nasty and they will take over your yard. So when you move to Concord or anywhere else in North Carolina, be prepared to go after those fire ants. And then if you're the industrious type, make sure you report what's going on to the North Carolina State Agriculture Department at the State Extension Office because they're tracking these fire ants trying to figure out exactly what we could do to get rid of them before they mess up our native landscape too much. Now the second thing I want you to prepare for with taking care of your yard in Concord, North Carolina or Harrisburg where I'm currently sitting, so let's just say Cabarrus County, you're going to be mowing for about nine months out of the year. You get a wee tiny break around winter time, and then if you're like me, you hold off as long as you can before you mow, then you have to get after it. So our grass grows a long part of the year, which if you're from up north, you're going to love it because it's pretty and green, but it's going to require you to work. Now, frankly, this is my peaceful time of day, but you can also hire a landscaper. There's lots of affordable options, and if you have an industrious teenager, you could raise an entrepreneur, just saying. Now, as far as grass goes, I I have fescue out here. It's our most common kind of grass. It grows real well here. It's very drought resistant. Mine is also mixed in with clover, which is a weed, happens to be green though. So don't get too stressed out if you have some weeds in your yard. We all do. And frankly, when the drought time comes and it's real dry in the summer, at least we have something green because for whatever reason, the weeds just stay green. Now you might be prone to liken Bermuda grass. A lot of our builders will install Bermuda grass because it has that beautiful turf look. The upside to Bermuda grass is that you can see where you have weeds and you can walk out and pluck, 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 and it will be very uniform. The downside to Bermuda grass is you've basically planted an invasive species that's going to take over your neighbor's yards. So be prepared to answer for that in your neighborhood and if you're the neighbor who's got this pretty fescue and your next door puts in some Bermuda grass y'all should probably have some lines of demarcation as to how you're going to handle that because Bermuda will take over it's wild like that I'll also point out that if you have a good established yard you don't have to get irrigation but a lot of folks do install it now in Cabarrus County you'll notice that a lot of folks that have irrigation have a little sign up that says irrigated by well water that that doesn't mean that the house itself is on well water necessarily, but a lot of folks install a separate well for their irrigation so they won't have the higher city rates of water and sewer which are currently on the house. For example, if you have a house that's on city water and sewer, whenever you're using the water, there's also a complimentary sewer bill. If you're wondering why, you said, but Lee, I'm washing the dishes, not flushing the commode. You should know that wastewater is wastewater. And so in that county water and sewer situation, that's how it goes. However, if you're running irrigation for your house, putting it on a well should not impact the public sewer system and it just goes back into the groundwater. So that's why you'll see a lot of folks have that. We as a realtor will consider it to be a perk for your property to have separate well for your irrigation. And it can be a good investment over time if you're the sort that irrigates your yard. Now, my house was built in the 70s. And so the yard is very established, although a bit prone to weeds. And that's just the life I have. So I'm not gonna go back and install irrigation but you can, and I've got a guy for that if you want to figure out how that works for you. Now, the third thing I want you to know about taking care of your yard in North Carolina. As I mentioned, we, we mow a good portion of the year, and in the summer, it gets really hot. So if you want to protect that grass, let's say that you've installed some nice fescue, and you've been fertilizing it and watering, and you're taking great care of it. If you cut it too short, it will sunburn and die and we don't wanna have funerals for your yard. So cut your grass to a four inch height. 
That's right, it's gonna feel really tall, but put four inches on your mower deck so that the grass does sit a little taller, but that will make it more hardy when we have times of dry heat and we just don't have a lot of rain sometimes. If you're hiring a landscaper, you can ask them to mow at a four inch height. A good landscaper should already be doing that. And if they argue with you, just get another landscaper, y'all. I mean, that's kind of crazy. If you're wondering why I know that, some of you know, but my history before real estate included working for Husqvarna, which is the world's finest manufacturer of weed trimmers, chainsaws, and lawn mowers. So I learned things and that's why I apply them in my yard. So keep your yard four inches high. And that way, when you're ready to sell it again after you buy it and you call Lee Brown and you say, hey, Lee Brown, I'm ready to sell. If I ask you how tall your grass was, if you tell me four inches, you'll get extra credit. That could involve you getting a prize when you list your house. No promises. You just don't know when it will be. But your yard is going to look better, and that adds to the curb appeal. As we all know, if you watch HGTV, one of the top things that they talk about is that curb appeal. How are people going to feel driving up to your house? That's why you want to take care of the yard you have make it look good, take care of the weeds if you can, and at least keep it mowed to a reasonable height. It will do wonders for your house when it's time to sell. But I'll add a little asterisk here. Let's say we have a super dry summer and we hit a July where it's not raining. Don't stress out if you need to sell your house because as we like to say, dry times are the great equalizer. Your yard is gonna look like everybody else's unless they are going above and beyond with irrigation. And not all folks want to use water supplies like that in times of drought. So just be reasonably smart about how we take care of the resources we have including your yard. Now, the last little tip I'll give you, I may have already said last, so call this a bonus tip. Our dirt tends to be this red clay. Now, you've heard people talk about the red dirt. It's really thick, it's really hard. It's also great at retaining moisture. That's why we love it. It's a little bit of a pain for putting in basements. It can be hard to get your garden going, but it's what retains our water during times of drought. So don't be stressed out about the red clay unless your children get into it, in which case the clothes they have on are pretty much ruined. You can try to get the red dirt out, but it's really hard, which is a good reminder to you. When you move to Concord and you go to the dirt track over at the Charlotte Motor Speedway Complex, wear clothes you can throw away, y'all, because that red dirt is going to get in them and it is not coming out. Now, for more information about relocating to Concord and other things you should know besides taking care of your yard, shoot me a message, call me, or whatever. I live here, and as long as I'm not on the mower, I'll probably hear the phone ring and we can chat.